math humans, we're going to do 4.1a today. We're going to be talking about the chain rule. Very famous, but today we're going to talk about the chain rule. Our objectives are that we're going to use that chain rule <clears throat> to find derivatives. Some people say when you talk about the chain rule, what starts inside stays inside. So I'm going to try to show you a variety of different ways to think about the chain rule. So the first one would be this. If I have the derivative of a composition f of g of x. Remember that this is on the inside. Technically the f would be on the outside. So it's going to be the derivative of f. So what started inside stays inside. But the thing that makes it the chain rule is then I have to take the derivative of what's inside. So another way to think about it, and you'll just kind of have to pick the method that helps you, it's, let's say I have a box squared, and on the inside of a box, I have a triangle. Well, if I want to take the derivative, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to manage the box. And so using the power rule, that's going to be 2 times the box. He stays inside. He started inside. He stays inside. Then I have to take the derivative of the inside. So I'm going to take the derivative of the triangle, right? So this particular piece is the power rule. This particular piece is what's called the chain rule because I have to take the derivative of what started inside. All right, so now let's do another one. So let's say I want to take the derivative, make it a little bit more entertaining. So now this time it's raised to the third power, but inside I have two things going on. I have a circle and I have a triangle. The first thing I'm going to manage is the outside rectangle, so this is going to be 3. Remember what starts inside stays inside, so those two guys are going to stay inside. He decreases by 1. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the circle, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the triangle. So I don't know if that's helpful, but some of my students have said in the past that that is helpful. So let's just jump in with a real example and kind of work our way through the chain rule. So for example number one, I'm going to be given y is equal to x squared plus 1 raised to the third. I don't want to expand this to the third power because the chain rule is easier. So I'm going to write dy dx is equal to that because that's what we want to find. So I do notice that it's the chain rule. So when I start my derivative, dy dx, I'm going to do what starts. I'm going to manage the power rule first. What started inside stays inside. Now is where that exponent decreases by 1. I'm going to write this. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to write times the derivative of x squared plus 1. So now I would do that math. This particular guy is done quantity squared. Now when I take the derivative of the second piece, I'm going to get 2x. So when I do these, I typically, instead of writing this piece, would just jump straight into the derivative. But until you learn the chain rule, this might be a really good idea to help you to remember to take the derivative of the inside. So now I'm going to clean it up just a little bit, and I would say that my dy dx is going to equal that 3 times 2 is going to be 6x times that x squared plus 1 to the third. Oops, my bad, to the second. And you don't have to expand this. This is sufficient because remember the general goal is we're going to get our derivative to a point where we can manage the math. All right, another way to think about the chain rule is to think about it from with respect to a composition. So let's say I had f of g of x, and I wanted to rewrite this as f of g of x. Again, similar to what we've just done, and my pen's not very happy. That's kind of a bummer. So if I want to take the derivative, it's going to be the chain rule. So it's going to be f prime, what starts inside, stays inside, times... Now I have to take the derivative of the inside thing. So again, that's just another way. We've already done that, but kind of just depends on what makes your life easier. All right, let's move on to example number two. So for example two, man, all of my pins seem to be crabby today. So I'm going to have y is equal to the third root of x squared minus 1 quantity squared 
And before I start doing any math, I'm actually going to rewrite this. So because this is the third root, I'm going to write this as x squared minus 1. Here's the squared raised to the 1 third. So now this is going to become x squared minus 1 raised to the 2 thirds. Because a power to a power is multiply. I want to find f prime of x. And I notice that this is the chain rule, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So for my derivative, the power comes out front. What starts inside stays inside. And then this is 2 thirds minus 3 thirds, because there's the minus 1, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. Alrighty, so now if I simplify this some more, I'm just going to leave this right here for right now. Oops, this is 2 thirds. Here's the 2 and the thirds, and I'm going to have x squared minus 1. 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is a negative 1 third times 2x. So now I'm going to clean that up a little bit. So in the numerator, I have 4x. In the denominator, I have 3 times x squared minus 1 to the 1 third. And then I'm going to write my answer. Remember, we always write a conclusion statement at the end, just like you do when you're writing because it makes, it gives some finality to what you've done so that it may, lets your reader know that you are finished with your task. All right, let's move on to the next example. I'm going to keep changing pens, see if I can find one that's happy. So for example number three, we're going to do a little bit of trig. Woo, trig! So for example three, I'm going to have y is equal to sine cubed of 2x plus 7. So this is going to be technically what is my inside. And I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of 2x plus 7. And I'm going to write it to the third power. Because until you get used to this notation, which in theory you are from pre-calc, sometimes it's helpful to, for our brains to think about it this way. So now if I start my derivative, y prime, the 3 comes out front. What starts inside stays inside. So here's my 2x plus 7 raised to the second. Now I need to take the derivative of this. So this is actually a double chain. Okay, so the derivative of sine is cosine. So again, this started inside, so it's going to stay inside. So here's the cosine of 2x plus 7. Now I have to take the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of that is 2. So let me just go back and write this using my ddx notation just in case it helps. Here was the initial, and I'm going to do the sine of 2x plus 7, and then here is the squared. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the sine of 2x plus 7. So when we did that again, here's the 3. The sine of 2x plus 7 squared stayed. The derivative of this is cosine, so here's my cosine of 2x plus 7. Now I need to take the derivative of the inside again, and so now I rewrite it. Can I see it? Oh, nope. Let me put my paper up. So then here is the sine of 2x plus 7 quantity squared, cosine 2x plus 7, and then the derivative of 2x plus 7 is 2. So you can see as your comfort level improves, you actually save yourself a lot of work, but we have to get to that point where we save ourselves some work. So I'm going to go back to here, which is the same thing as here, and I'm going to clean up my derivative. So I'm going to have a 6, that's the 3 and the 2, and then I'm going to write sine squared 2x plus 7 times the cosine of 2x plus 7, and that would be how I would report my derivative. All right, let's do another example as we grunt through our chain rule. So let's see if we can get another color. Maybe this one will work. Maybe not. It's a new pen. All right, so here's example number four. Okay, there it is. So this time we're going to be given y is equal to x times 3x minus 9 raised to the third. And I want to find dy dx. Well, as I notice this, notice that I have this x times this guy, but I can't distribute because I have to manage this part of that equation first. So I'm going to do the product rule 
and I'm going to do the chain rule. So if I start taking my derivative, f prime of x is going to equal, this is the product part first, the first thing times the derivative of the second, so I'm going to do 3 times 3x minus 9 squared times the derivative of the inside 3, that's that first piece, plus the second thing, 3x minus 9, this is the product, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. So now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. 3 times 3 is 9, so this is going to be 9x times 3x minus 9 quantity squared plus 3x minus 9 quantity cubed. So now is a great time to look for factoring, and we've talked about this before, but notice that these two terms have that in common. So I'm going to factor out a 3x minus 9 quantity squared, and I'm going to get 9x plus, and then on this one it leaves 3x minus 9, so then I have 3x minus 9 quantity squared, 9 plus 3 is going to be 12x minus 9, and this is your derivative. This would be where I would stop. It's possible you could have stopped here, but oftentimes you will see, especially on a multiple choice, where they take that extra time to pull this out front and then reduce it a little bit more just because it seems to make the math a little bit easier. All right, for our last example, example number five, we're going to pull out all the stops and we're going to have some fun. So here's example number five. And I'm going to give you y is equal to 1 half x squared times 16 minus x squared raised to the 1 half, and I want the derivative. All right, so as we look at this, and again, I'm going to have the product rule, this times this, and I'm going to have the chain rule. So let's just get started. Here's my derivative. It's going to equal the first thing times the derivative of the second, so I'm going to do 1 half times 16 minus x squared raised to the negative 1 half, because remember, 1 half minus 1, minus 2 over 2, is a negative 1 half, times the derivative of the ins inside, a negative 2x, plus the second thing, I'm going to close my parentheses, plus the second thing, 16 minus x squared, to the 1 half times the derivative of the first, which is 1 half times 2 x to the 1. So now we need to clean up a little bit before we start to manage other information. So let's notice that I have this half times this. The 2's are going to cancel, but I'm going to circle that negative so I don't lose it. And so now I have x squared times x, so I'm going to get, and then here's a 2. So I'm going to get x a negative, x to the third over 2, and then I'm going to have 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. These two 2's cancel, so I'm going to have plus x times 16 minus x, oops, I wrote that down wrong, x squared raised to the 1 half, okay? So now, to, before I try to simplify this a little bit, I'm going to take this guy to the bottom. So I have a negative x to the third over 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared, and then plus x times the square root of 16 minus x squared. If you wanted to, depending on the problem, you could stop here. But let's say, that's a p, let's say you needed to go further because this answer didn't show up in the multiple choice, so what I'm going to do now is multiply by my lowest common denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 2 and then 16 minus x squared over 2 times 16 minus x squared, I'm going to put my little parentheses in there. So now if I clean this up, y prime is going to equal the negative x cubed is going to stay, here's this x, and then when I have that 2, and then when these two guys get multiplied together, it's 16 minus x squared. And then in the denominator, I have 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. So now if I clean this up a little bit more, I have a negative x to the third. 16 times 2 is plus 32x, and then minus 2x to the third over 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared 
Combine like terms, this is our last step, and I have a negative 3x to the third plus 32x over 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. So again, sometimes you have to decide where you're going to stop. Initially we had talked about, I could have stopped here. But if you were doing a multiple choice and that answer wasn't there, you would need to continue on to be able to get to this answer. They will give you the same result if you were trying to find slope or a rate of change, but depending on what you're doing, sometimes we do have to keep going forward. All right, my dears, that is it for today. How's that for some algebra? See you soon.